welcome to our wonderful 5G and um, King's University panel. My name is Dan Cundiff, I'm Managing Director of Pangea and uh, today we are talking about everything 5G related but most importantly our um, university collaboration with King's University and the knowledge transfer partnership between Innovate UK and Pangea as well. Um, and to my left are my lovely people who've come to join us. So um, I'm going to try and introduce everybody as best I can, but probably better for them to do a little bit about themselves. So we have um, Christos Politis, which is the University uh, Professor of Wireless Communication and is a leading figure in global wireless um, uh, network research. Uh, tell us something else about you that we don't already know. Uh, well, I love uh, I love uh, windsurfing. Oh really? So Excellent. There we go. I travel there a lot, as you know. I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm off uh, to Barcelona tomorrow for nice. another new project. Excellent. Of mine, and uh, yeah, so I'm leading actually activities uh, at uh, Kingston on uh, 5G networks. Perfect. Uh, I have a few projects, uh, possibly a million or over a million pounds uh, worth of budget. research happening. Yeah. So definitely the guy to know at the moment when it comes to the wine side of it. Uh, we have Dr. Nada Philip as well, who is very much focused on video compression. Um, tell us a bit about you. Yeah, okay, thank you, Dan. Um, yes, my area of research and development is in the field of uh, mobile healthcare. And as a multidisciplinary uh, field, it involves uh, stakeholders from the healthcare business uh, model developers and the ICT. So I came from the ICT side of this project. Uh, over the years, as you know, this field evolved with the involvement of technology, and especially the wireless communication, starting from the, in my time, from the 2.5G, where we managed <laughs> to uh, maybe use an application for text messaging, for example, for healthcare application, to the 4G and 5G, and the capability of uh, transmitting uh, high-definition mobile. Uh, video contents, uh, both for remote monitoring and for the diagnostic purposes. Um, so yeah, this is my area, of course. Um, in terms of the ICT, um, I cover both uh, data and uh, multimedia communications, and uh, also uh, for um, you know other applications related to remote monitoring that involves um, wearable Internet of Things gateway goes to the cloud computing and the analysis we do on data to provide decision support for healthcare. Lots to do and, and yeah and the reason why the healthcare is important we'll come on to in a second so Absolutely. We have, we have and, uh, yeah for the emergency services. The project. So um, and then we also have Dr. Arzan Usman who's actually um, been working with us <laughs> since April and we're very glad to have him and part of the Kingston uh, University. Um, tell us a bit about yourself as well. Thanks Dan. So I'm a recent graduate from uh, South Korea. I did my PhD in IT convergence and um, <clears throat> my expertise is related to quality of experience in multimedia communication yeah. and uh, the sideline topic is uh, next generation wireless networks. So this uh, project that we are working on right now is purely related to 5G communication and how the different use cases of 5G communication can be used in different emergency services and other than that my expertise is related to high definition video streaming in next gen generation networks perfect well thank you for you guys we have thank you. we have health we have um, windsurfing and we have um, moves on the dance floor oh well this is it i mean like you know <laughs> you, must, you, must, you must do i've um i will i will go with golf rugby um and um probably Probably sticking sticking away from the ocean at the moment because I've seen the sharks in South Africa, yeah, and there. they're and they're a lot bigger than yes, probably yes, um, anything yeah. in the Mediterranean. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> so just to recap on what the project is about and why and why we're all here really is that so probably last year sometime um, we saw that Innovate UK, who is who is a wonderful sponsor in the UK for creating jobs. I think they've created almost seventy thousand um uh, jobs uh, contributing almost 18 billion to the uk economy and, and and a very well funded um kind of you know project administrator if you want or a project curator they they have a project style called the ktp which is about knowledge transfer between a university um being kingston university a, a commercial entity being pangea and of course government if you want or innovate uk uh, this project is particularly about and and, and i'm not going to claim to be as you know kind of academic as these guys, but the understanding is that we're looking at 
compression techniques um, over 5G networks and 4G plus networks, but particularly over mobile networks, to drive efficiencies um, across healthcare, and we'll talk about that in a second, uh, but maybe other things as well as we develop and move our way forward. So maybe we begin um, with Ozan actually. Take, take us a little bit through about your role in the project particularly. Now that you're effectively part of all the teams, um, tell us a little bit about your, your piece in the project. Well, um, then when I joined this project, so initially I had purely academic background. Mm -hmm. And this was my first step towards industry. Yeah. So the bridge between ac academic uh, research and industry is that ac academic research is always a bit ahead of industry. So to bridge this gap, we have to realize things. Yeah. So this project is mainly focused on enabling uh, 5G services in emergency application and services across UK. And what I bring to the project is my expertise in uh, quality of experience in multimedia communication. So how quality of experience is linked with this project is simply uh, that 5G networks are going to be mostly about quality of service yeah. combined with quality of experience. Yeah. So quality, quality of experience is uh, linked with how users perceive the quality of any service or application that is provided to them. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be purely user-centric. Okay. So um, I have vast experience in working in next generation cellular networks yes. because my expertise began uh, when I was working on a um, very ambitious project in South Korea related to towards 5G and beyond. Mm -hmm. So um, in 5G, what we have is different unique use cases. Yeah. And one of the unique uh, use cases is uh, ultra reliable low latency communication. And I have experience working on that. Mm -hmm. So we will be combining that use case with our project uh, that is uh, video, high definition video streaming in uh, 5G networks. Perfect, that's cool. That, Aslan has a lot to do, if you haven't noticed already from the conversation going there. Um, actually, Crystal, so I'm gonna come to you next because I know that from your perspective, there are several projects you're working on anyway. Yeah. And so from a common sort of a oversight perspective, what is it that you're looking into this project particularly? So let me let me quickly yeah. give a very brief um, kind of uh, description of the other projects and how they relate to this project. I so it is very, very nice. So actually I have another project which is funded by the EPSRC, um, mm -hmm. which is essentially about emergency comms. Uh -huh. okay. And there actually we use um, drones uh, to be able to, let's say, let's say um, utilize the golden hour once the incident has happened. Yeah, so as quick as um, possible. Yeah. yeah, so get the teams working immediately. Uh, now for this project actually, uh, we thought actually to do something obviously something in the UK because from the Innovate UK, yeah. as you said. Uh, and see how 5G uh, networks can help, uh, let's say, emergency teams, more specifically uh, ambulances, yeah. in dense environments like London, uh, to transver transverse actually and send, let's say, high resolution, high fidelity video. Another will tell us more about, about yeah. this in a while. Um, uh, back to the uh, back to the hospital. Got it. Ba back back to the, yeah. the, the specialists. So essentially, um, utilizing 5G networks, we think, um, will be a fantastic uh, a way of uh, applying this uh, advanced technology yeah, uh, to such, a, if I may call it actually, virgin, uh, vertical uh, market. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think um, it, there's, there's nice collaboration because, like you say, there are other projects that are similar and we can uh, effectively try to accelerate. Yes. the different ways we want to go from there. Exactly. Um, Nora, so tell us a little bit about the healthcare side. I know you very close to things like sonography, mm -hmm. and particularly how we can help the um, uh, the doctors really understand the images. And of course, we're trying to send these over 5G. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about what, what role you're going to play in that. Yeah, the, the, the important role is the knowledge that you're going to transfer um, um, to the GM, to the associate, helping with the associate, is in the area of uh, video streaming. Okay. And that involves two parts, really. Um, it will be research and development area of video coding, what type of coding we're going to use, and state of the art uh, in that area. 
and also um, uh, the quality of service, quality of experience, mm. uh, the controller that we're going to build um, so we can transfer these medical content to arrive at the medical center in good quality that they can diagnose um, um, the particular situation for that uh, patient. And as we know, this uh, traffic will, be, will coexist with other traffic, yeah. so we want to provide um, some sort of uh, a quality, of quality of experience controller to make sure um, that this content are at the other end. Because uh, it's all really time dependent, isn't it? It's all Absolutely. massively time dependent, and that's Absolutely. what we're trying to all achieve in that way. Okay, perfect. I mean, the, I'm not going to talk about the kind of other opportunities just yet, but there's got to be um, some challenges in this world of 5G, right? I mean, the little bits that I know is we're going to need more cells, we're going to need more density yes. of mm -hmm. cells, which means we're going to have to do more rollouts, which means we're going to require time to do that as well. Um, but equally, what that's also going to have is we're going to have to, def to de decide which devices are getting what, because there's going to be more people consuming the bandwidth. Maybe um, if I go to, maybe Oslan, you know, if you want to maybe give us a quick feeling of what you think some of the challenges are, particularly for the project, but maybe for 5G in general. So uh, if we go to Cisco's recent forecast, yeah. so the statistics are like 90% uh, of the global traffic is going to be video based. Wow. So that, and that does not include peer-to-peer -peer communication. So this means that uh, the exponential... So do you think we won't make a telephone call anymore? We'll just, we'll just make a video call? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because 5G is going to solve our connectivity and data rate issues. Yeah. So this shouldn't be a problem right. when 5G is in its full potential. Fair, fair enough, yeah. Definitely. Enough. Interesting. So what will happen is... Um, as the exponential growth uh, in terms of data demands is increasing and user demand is increasing. So 5G can offer massive connectivity and it can offer massive coverage. As just you mentioned that we will be needing massive deployment of cells. So this massive deployment of cells ultimately leads to massive coverage. Mm -hmm. So these things will be overcome. But when 5G is in its full potential. What about Christos, from your perspective, um, other sort of more technical challenges, you know, is it going to cost the operators too much to roll out in a timely fashion, or do you think there's some reasons that they can make it happen? Um, I want to obviously cover this, yeah, but of course, also I want yeah. to say something about our collaboration as yeah. a second kind of, uh, of course. step. So essentially, yes, uh, as you know, uh, operators here in the UK, but across Europe, uh, they paid quite a lot of money to acquire 3G licenses. Yeah. Uh, I mean, still the pain of the money that uh, yeah, yeah. they acquired the license back then. So I think obviously Spectrum is quite expensive. It's become quite expensive. I mean, one of the uh, let's say targets of uh, 5G is to move in higher higher uh, frequencies, yeah. so above six gigs. Um, where essentially there you have more uh, more spectrum availability, but at the same time um, you have you are restricted by 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 actually distance. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, the so actual physics of right. Exactly yeah. because of the physics. So essentially, this is one of the challenges. Another another challenge, obviously, for us and is going to play definitely a role is actually mobility. So essentially, us ambulances actually um, uh, move in different speeds in very challenging uh, urban environments. Mm -hmm. How this is going to be affecting actually uh, you know transversing. Uh, video back to hospitals. Mm. Uh, this is very challenging. I think, I think this, is, this is really a huge challenge and I've been working on that for almost 20 years. And I'm still <laughs> working on it. So, so definitely it's a challenge. Yeah. Uh, but so, so, so bigger bandwidth doesn't just make it better? No, no, or easier, no, sorry. Not necessarily. Yeah, not yeah necessarily. exactly. Not necessarily. But before I, before I close, mm. uh, I know I know I speak a lot, but before I, <laughs> before, I, before I close, actually I want just to say that another challenge is actually, because this is very very unique project, yeah. unlike my other EPSRC project which is funded by the government as well. Uh, this is very unique because essentially we have you guys, yeah. and essentially our research should be applicable mm. to your systems. So yeah. essentially this is, I believe this is another a degree of uh, yeah. Yeah, difficulty. Well, <laughs> or, or actually, well, well that, that, was, that was the bit I was going to kind of come to. So, you know, Pangea's role in all of this is really to, um, is to commercialize what we're all trying to achieve academically as fast as possible and make it applicable to 
um, to real life, right? And sort of, you know, get people to use it, get people to buy into it, but more importantly, give back to, um, I guess, the economy as quick as we can, you know. Um, obviously making ambulances um, save lives, you know, because we can stream the video in a, in a more effective way through all the challenges for 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being able to help the sonographers make decisions quicker and in fact try and make decisions for them is probably the idea we're trying to do. Uh, and to do that all in a, a relatively short time so that we can take advantage of the access methods we're going to be getting moving moving forward. Um, no, totally, totally, totally get all that. I mean, I think kind of the, the next steps for us um, and moving forward with the project, it's only really been going since April, right? It's yes. only, only really got started and um, tomorrow, well, whenever you get to see this, it will probably already have happened, <laughs> but very soon we'll have the third um, uh, kind of announcement around 5G. We've had one from EE, which has happened already in the UK. They've launched some of their 5G projects. Um, three has made some really interesting um, claims and then of course Vodafone launches in seven cities uh, shortly as well. Um, just maybe if we can touch on those three in particular, um, and Arslan, I'm going to come to you. Like, what do you think, or who do you think has got the best chance at the 5G um, game out of the UK operators? Well, um, Dan, if you look at the auction results that happened a couple of years ago, then we would just think that, okay, Vodafone and O2, they have the best chances. But right now, if you look at the uh, spectrum allocation that has occurred recently. Then three has acquired UK broadband's almost 84 megahertz of band. Yeah. So now they have a collective band of 100 megahertz, which means almost four to five times of extra band than the other operators have. So when you have a collective band of 100 megahertz, then definitely you can provide massive data rates compared to the other operators. Yeah. So, 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 so effectively three's got, uh, in theory, or on paper, a great opportunity here, but equally they need to probably increase the infrastructures as well to get there, right? It's not just going to happen overnight. Definitely. Yeah, there's a they, lot of money that needs to be pumped in. They will be facing some hardware challenges at the same time yeah. because acquiring just some huge spectrum is not a problem, but having the hardware to deploy such services is a, is a problem. So the challenges are there. And at the same time, they are offering something called non-standalone architecture, which is very surprising, but yet ambitious. So definitely, I would say that 3 is going to have the best services across UK. So obviously, 5G has got um, more than just uh, our project to kind of help the world achieve a few new things and some other opportunities. One I would like to touch on particularly, and We'll come to some other ideas with you guys, but in our customer base, there is um, or, or there has been a lot of um, uh, orders for traditional broadband, five of the cabinet now, and then obviously five of the premises and the Ethernet, right? Um, 5G looks like it's going to surpass a lot of those metrics. You know, when we look at the latencies, promised challenge there, I suppose, but you know, the latencies look pretty in pretty incredible on 5G. The speeds look incredible. We've obviously got challenges around distance, but we're going to overcome those. Um, and most importantly, probably, is the time to deliver it. The challenge in the market today is that fixed connectivity takes, you know, can take a minimum three months in some cases. Sometimes I've heard of people taking 12 months to get connectivity. What do you think is the kind of opportunity to replace fixed connectivity with 5G in the future. I'm just going to add a bit from my side. Is I think that there is an, a, a threat for fixed connectivity, but there's also an opportunity for fixed connectivity. What I mean by that is that actually we're going to need to backhaul 5G somewhere. We're going to have to use the fixed providers to do that for us, right? Yes. So, so there's an opportunity for them. But when customers are waiting for their Ethernet lines or, or just for broadband or even in-home users, to get the service within the next day is a phenomenal thing that we can achieve with 5G. Um, other opportunities that that can bring, but equally other sectors that can maybe benefit from 5G? Maybe, maybe Oslan, if you want to go quick and then we'll go. Uh, to yes, the actually, um, when we talk about backhauling in wireless infrastructure, we have two options. One is the fixed connectivity, the other one is microwave backhauling. Okay. And in 5G, they are mainly focused towards microwave backhauling. Right. Because one of the reasons is that 
microwave backhauling in terms of capital ex expenditure is much less uh, compared to fixed connectivity. Interesting. And recently there have been tests with uh, the tech giant Huawei and some developing countries where they have deployed microwave backhauling wow. and have completely replaced fixed connectivity. Interesting. So, yes. That's another way to go there. Not a, um, obviously, this project particularly focuses on um, you know uh, the, the medical field and kind of medical um, support that 5G services can bring, particularly for the video. But is there any any kind of other related areas that you think we can we can do? What else can we get from the ambulance? What else could we maybe do? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, when 5G became a reality, many applications would appear on the surface that was not before to yeah, take true. advantage of this. And this will compete with the traffic um, on top of what you have now. Yeah. And this um, mainly will be based on uh, ticket, you know, use video communication in these. Um, and in terms of uh, medical application, uh, remote surgery where it requires, yeah, uh, let's say, um, a very low um, delay, and, and maybe teleconferencing or. Um, uh, sending a video conferencing mm -hmm. um, to, 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 to communicate with a remote, uh, let's say, consultant or yeah. uh, surgeon. Um, yeah, so to take advantage of the available bandwidth and the low speed, of yeah. course, um, these are some of these applications. It's almost um, coming back to what Ozan said about Cisco predicting 90% of the traffic being video. You know, if you can bring the doctor into um, the ambulance or whatever it might be into the environment, especially in the golden hour that you mentioned, then that just tries to solve a lot of those points. Yeah. Um, is there any particular other things that you think about? Opportunities of 5G? Well, opportunities, I think 5G would be huge on uh, cars, so yeah. connect, connected cars. Great I, mean, one, yeah. I, believe, I believe that is, uh, if, I, if, if, if I was to put my bucks somewhere. <laughs> put your windsurfer yeah. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, change my, yeah, my cover. Exactly. Connected with Windsor. Connected with Windsor. Maybe, maybe, maybe that will be the future, I don't know. But uh, I think, yeah, I think the connected cars mm. uh, platoon in, uh, you know, smart uh, motorways. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, smart traffic uh, prediction and so on, I think uh, it's the future. Well, it does have all the criteria you need, specifically on the latency as well, for, you know, the autonomous vehicles, highly debated, but yet there's been loads of investment in it, exactly. you know, for people exactly. moving down that road. No, fair enough. Um, so I'm just going to move over to one of the things that we are um, not going to not going to talk about too much, but just give you a little bit of a hint about. Is um, we're very excited to be collaborating with um, a an absolute top top London hospital uh, shortly, uh, particularly trying to take our project to the next level, um, where we would like to do some demos and maybe some showcasing, uh, and maybe even one of our partners or a couple of our partners might come down and, and see us. Um, about that, um, Ozan, I know I know you're pretty close to that, but um, maybe all three or, or two or all one of you can maybe tell us a little bit more about that. What are we looking to achieve when we're there? Well, um, we have two test beds uh -huh. uh, in terms of ambulances. One is a fixed ambulance, and the other one is a mobile ambulance. Got it. And we have access to their ultrasound sonography equipment. Their all the equipment that is embedded in the ambulances. So we can actually perform our uh, tests for our project in those test beds. Nice. Other than that, we have access to their immersive environment where th you can mimic any kind of emergency service and see how 5G acts out in, the, yeah. in that kind of environment. That's so we will have access to those test beds and we can simply test our project there. Anything from you guys you want to add to that? I would say probably if we achieve that, it will be first in the UK. That's true, that's uh, true. So it's a difficult task, but uh, I believe uh, we have a strong team here. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to, to do it. Yeah, to, to it. But also, I don't, uh, we don't need, uh, we shouldn't actually forget that we are already moving to 6G. Yeah, well, I was going to bring yeah, that up or yeah. not bring that up because yeah. I know you went to a conference. Yeah, I was one, in, I one was of the few you go to. You know? I was yeah, I was in Brussels. It wasn't conference. It was uh, we were invited by the European Commission. Okay. Um, uh, so essentially, then we got a glimpse of uh, 6G. Uh, I think uh, one of the things they discussed is uh, six, above 6G 
60 gigs uh, connectivity. Oh, yeah. So how, how systems would be... What are the challenges when you get to that high frequency though? What are the things you've got to deal with? Just, is it just, you know, do you just need more dense equipment to make it yeah, happen, yeah, basically? Yeah, more dense equipment, uh, essentially buildings and uh, dense uh, urban environments yeah, actually. become very difficult. Uh, exactly, to, uh, mm -hmm. to transfer the, uh, the information. I think obviously you need to work a bit on the physical layer, antennas, yeah. miniaturization of antennas and so on. Interesting. For that, I think uh, we will move from small cells to personal cells. Personal cells, which is all <laughs> going to be walking around yes. <laughs> being connected right. with 5G. Exactly. Well, you know, on that note, um, <laughs> I'd like to thank you all very, very, very much, Chris mm -hmm. Osnada, Arslan, for joining us. Um, yeah, lots going on. Pangea, um, Innovate UK, and Kingston University working in partnership to really, really do something unique, um, maybe be a UK first, hopefully be some world first as well as we continue with the project. Um, and I thank you very much for listening. Uh, my name is Dan Kalafani, Director of Pangea. Thank you so much.